Welcome back to another video on data to decisions. In this video, we will be building a simple interactive theme schedule visual based on the NFL schedule data for 2023. For example, if I want to see specifically a team, I can click on that team and see the black teams week by week schedule for 2023. And it will also highlight which team are they playing, whether it's a road game or a home game. So very, very simple techniques we will be using. This is a follow-up to the previous videos where we have been talking about using the publicly available ESPN data in creating this dynamic visuals. So let's get started with today's video. So just a quick overview of what data we will be using. We spent a lot more time in the previous videos explaining this data. So I'm gonna go quickly in this one. So please check out the previous videos if you have not watched already. So we have the games data, which is the detailed list of all the games that are being played in the regular season. It has the week number, it has the home team, away team, and then what is the matchup, home and away team. We also have data on uh, the standings for each team, win loss records coming directly from ESPN.com. And using that, we created this weekly schedule previously where you can click on a week and see the schedule for that specific week. Uh, now. There is also one more set of data, which we didn't cover too much in previously, but basically this is a list of all the teams and then which conference they belong to, which division they are, and then the team abbreviation. Okay, so I'm just gonna call this maybe team division sheet for now. Now we will be building this team schedule, which is the interactive slicer based team schedule. So I'm gonna just first, mark the canvas here. Now, before we start doing this uh, interactive visual, we need to make sure that the slicers are set up. So this is where I will go and create a new help sheet. Help uh, for slicer. You can name it however you would like. But what I want here is a list of distinct team abbreviations, which we will use for our slicer. So I will do unique from, let's say we have the team division, so I can use the team abbreviation. I can also use the team name if I want that to be my slicer, but I'm gonna use the abbreviation. It gives me this list and I want to make sure I sort it. Um, so by this way, I can make sure it's alphabetical. And now using this, I'm gonna, I'm just clicking somewhere inside this dynamic array and then do insert pivot table. And then I want to insert the pivot table right here and then hit okay. And now um, I think there is a little bit of mistake once again I made. So in the pivot table, uh, I want to change the data to change the data source. And then I want to make sure the C3 is selected, right? Because that is um the column header and now in the pivot table when i come down here i can now drag the team abbreviation uh, and now this gives me this thing now everything is good uh we have done some more detailed videos on this technique so i'm, I'm kind of going fast on this uh but i will do a slicer on this pivot table and the slicer will be used to actually filter so as i click on it you will see that this changes what we need to do is to make sure we give a name to this. I like to give a name to the cell. Instead of C39, I'll give it as team selected. Okay, now we are, we are done with it. So I'm going to take this slicer, click on it, cut by pressing Control X. And now we will go to the team schedule, open canvas, Control V to paste the slicer. So we have the slicer now, and I can control the slicer to have let's say eight columns and four rows because we have 32 teams. Um, so let's say, for example, something like this. Nice. Now, when somebody clicks on this, the team selected uh, is going to be automatically picking up that value. That's great. Now, I need to use that value to filter to the games that are played by that team by V, right? So the first thing I'm going to do is to go and say filter from the games um table so we have all these values right so let's say just to keep things simple 
I'm bringing the whole thing here. Okay, so filter the entire games table, but only do it for the team that I um, am interested in. So in order to do so, we will use the search function. Search, what text am I searching for? That is the team selected text. That's basically the team abbreviation, right? And then comma, where am I searching? I'm searching in this matchup column. I want to search in the matchup column. So games, open bracket, square brackets, match up, close, and I close the search function. Now the search will give me back a number if it finds that value. So let's say, for example, the user has selected C-A-R for Carolina. Now, if it finds C-A-R in the matchup column, search function will give back a number. But if it doesn't find it, it returns an error. So what we need to do is to make sure that if there is any error, consider it like zero, okay? What is my filter condition? I want that value to be found, that text value to be found. If it finds, there'll be a number. So I'm going to put my filter condition as greater than zero. So I'll explain once again, once we see the results, but I'm gonna close my parenthesis now and see what the results are that Carolina, Carolina, Carolina. So every one of these matchup values that have the letter C A R. And that's because our formula was checking for the team selected value. The team selected is what? C A R. So let's let me just click on C H I Chicago. So now it changed. And the team selected is what? C H I Chicago. So clearly this is dynamic based on the slicer selection. We are able to only bring the data we need but it's still not sorted in a way that I would want. So first of all, I want to sort it by week. So I'm going to sort this and uh, at the end, I will do an index of one because the first column is the week column. I want to sort it by week. And then I want to uh, sort it ascending. So I do another one. Hit enter, now I have order by week. Perfect, so this is the week. So when the user selects Chicago, the opponent for Chicago can be in the column E here or can be here. So it's not in one column that we can pick up the opponent for Chicago from. That is the catch. So here it is Green Bay in the first game, it's in column F. But then the second game, the opponent is Tampa Bay, which is in column E. This is what makes it a little bit tricky. So we need to write some formulas to extract the correct opponent. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is um, whether it's a, a home game or it could be a road game. So depending on that, whether we may say, is it versus this team or it's at the scene. So maybe well, let's just do opponent first. That might be easier. So the opponent would be. As in Excel, as with anything, most of the things, um, there are many, many ways to do it. So I'm going to use a different technique than I've done before, which is I know that the matchup value will have Chicago, right? If I remove Chicago and the hyphen, I will get the opponent. Whether the, uh, the opponent name is before the hyphen or after the hyphen, it doesn't matter. I have to remove them. So for example, Chicago hyphen Green Bay, next one is Tampa Bay hyphen Chicago. So Chicago is in different places, but I want to remove Chicago and the hyphen, right? So I am going to use a technique for substitute and I will, if I spell it right, then I'm gonna use this text and then first of all, remove the, the text Chicago. So that I, I don't want to hard code it because I want to be dynamic. So I'm gonna type in team selected. And then if I find team selected, then I will just replace it with nothing, right? So close parenthesis, hit okay. And um, yeah, so that should be okay. If I drag this, you will see that CHI has been removed. Fine, but I still have the, um, let's see, the uh, hyphen or the dash. So I will write another substitute on top of this. And this time I will say I need hyphens to remove it. So what did I do by mistake? Once again, I didn't type substitute correctly, okay? So I got it right this time. 
and now I have an opponent. Great. So the other part I wanted to do was to bring in whether it's an away game or a road game. And one way to do that would be if, for example, uh, in the away game. So this is the third column is the away game. Let me go and take a look at it. Home and away and match up, right? So I go back here. This is okay. This is home team, away team. And this is matchup. Now, if I know the away team, so if the away team equals our team selected, right? That means the it is being played at uh, the opponent's uh, location. So I will put that's a road game. So at comma. What if it's not? If it is not, then put versus let's try this okay and uh, i'm sure that there'll be one case of a problem uh, when there is a buy so for example you see week 13 there is a buy we need to handle that but before we do that let's take a look at whether it's working correctly this is at tampa bay second game is at tampa bay because it's a road game this one is at kansas city this one um uh, is Chicago, Denver, and then the home team is Chicago. So home game, it will say VS for versus. When it is an away game, it will say at. So that's working fine. The only thing is, if it's a buy, what do you do? So I will go here and say, if the away equals buy, then don't don't say anything. Just Or you can say buy. Uh, I'm just going to leave it blank. Uh, and then close parenthesis and apply this formula to all the cells. So now you have by with rank, and then otherwise you have this populated. So it is all good. Now let's do the logo because I think that that is one of the parts of making the visuals more appealing is to get the logo. So for the logo formula, I can go to the week schedule, which we did before, and I'm gonna take this, copy this uh, formula. And then I will go back into our new thing and then I will paste it. Now the change that we want to make sure is the reference here should be to the opponent uh, abbreviation and you don't have to change anything else. You automatically get Green Bay and you can extend this further. Now, when you have a buy, you have a problem. So what you need to do is if equals buy, then don't put any image, otherwise put this image. So that should take care of that problem. There you go. Okay, so now do we need all these columns in between? No, I can just right click and hide. And now it will say week one versus um, Green Bay. And we have the logo there as well. And if um, to add a little bit more to it, I can also bring in the name of the opponent. So the, in order to bring the name of the opponent, I can do a simple lookup, say X lookup, this abbreviation, and go to the one of these tables where we have the team description, right? So I'm looking up with the abbreviation, but pulling back the team name. Okay, there you have it. And if it is a buy, I think we'll still have a problem. Yes. So then similarly, we'll do um, you can actually use within the XLOOKUP function itself, there is an option. If you don't find the value or if you don't find a matching thing, you can enter the default value. I will just put black because I don't want any value to be entered. I cannot find anything. There we go. Uh, if you want buy, you can put buy as the last uh, argument for the XLOOKUP. But I've done this. Um, let's just do a little bit of formatting here. I can make uh this up here bigger and let's say and then the other thing we could do is to do some uh conditional formatting to do give a like a banded uh rows approach or a design so uh that's very simple i can select all these values go to conditional formatting new rule use a formula and this time i will say if is even function, open parenthesis, 
roll off. First cell is C12. So I'm going to type in C12. No dollar symbols. Close my is even. So what this is doing is if it is an if the row is an uh, even number row, then use this design, right? I can do a pattern. I can do a colors. But anyway, just do it as in a subtle way as possible so that it's not um, overpowering the visual. The other thing I would do is to make sure they're all aligned, centered like that. So we have a simple, nice, interactive visual to create a team selection. And you can see that team specific uh, schedule. You'll always have 18 weeks. So it, that's why we kind of hard coded that 18. Um, but if we want it to be more dynamic, we can kind of choose to make some choices accordingly. But there you have it. It's very, very easy, simple techniques. And hopefully this is helpful. Please let me know your feedback. I hope to hear from you. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon in the next video.